All right, folks, welcome back to Procreate. So we're going to explore one more tool here in the context of this rose before we get back into doing the art side. And the next thing I want to explore is what are called adjustments. The way adjustments work, they're in here under this magic wand looking thing. And so you can apply adjustments to the layer. Adjustments apply to layer. And because we only have this one layer, because I told you guys to just create one, you're going to be very easily able to tell what each adjustment does. Now, the thing about Procreate is it will not allow you to readjust adjustments. So once you commit them, you either have to do the two finger undo or you have to create another image. It's a little bit tricky. Let me show you how this works. If I hit adjustment and the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a hue, saturation, and brightness adjustment. Now this comes down to the bottom and you'll see that I can change the hue of this rose, I can change the saturation of the rose, and I can change the brightness of the rose. Now once I do this and I commit, I cannot undo. So if I click the adjustment, ta-da, it's done. There's no undo. The only undo is going backward and undoing it with two fingers or using the slider bar. So now let's look at the opacity. Now you see over here at the top it says slide to adjust. Take your stylus and you can adjust the opacity of that layer. So if you wanted it really, really transparent, you could bring it down to nothing or you can go just short of 100. I'm going to keep it at 100 because I'm not done with this lesson yet, but that's how you adjust opacity. And most of these adjustment layers have you sliding your stylus for a certain power. I'll give you an example of another one. If you do Gaussian Blur, now it says slide to adjust. Let's go ahead and slide to the right, and you'll see the further you go to the right, the worse it gets. Further you go to the left, the better it gets. I'm going to keep it at zero because I don't want to blur it, but let's say that I went through here and I said that looks good, and I applied it. Let's say I come over here now and I grab the brush. Guess what? There's no do-overs. You have to two-finger readjust. All right. The common ones I use a lot. I use Gaussian Blur. I use the Opacity. I use the Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. There is an area in this course on using Procreate for photos. That's where I do use Sharpen. I do use Noise. You can even Liquify. And I really like Liquify. This is very similar to Photoshop. You can grab certain areas and you could expand certain areas. You can then come up and do different things with the edges. You can twirl everything to the right. Let's go ahead and undo, undo, undo. Get them back. So, Liquify is another great filter that I use a lot. And I also use Curves a lot. Now, anybody that's used Curves, it works the same way. Over here on the left, you got your darks. So if I want to darken this image, I can. If I want to come over here, I can. And if I only wanted to grab a channel, say green, I can now adjust the greens. We're going to be using curves a lot. I've got a couple projects in which we're going to use them in masks. So we're going to be working with curves adjustments. And if you click outside, you can always reset the image back to its original state. So that's where your adjustment layers come in. In this section two, using one image, we have taken a look at transformation. We've taken a look at selection. You know where the adjustments are. The last thing I want to cover real quick is actions. We know this is where you can insert a photo. You can cut, copy, paste. You can make some canvas adjustments. We're going to be covering the drawing guide a lot here in the next couple lessons. This is also where you export. So let's say that you like this. You export as a JPEG, and now you can save the image. Let's go ahead and save image, and away it goes. Where's the image? Hmm, let's check photos. Let's go to recents. There it is, there's your recent image. So now you know where to export a JPEG version of the art that you're creating. All right, I want to keep these pretty short because there's a lot to do. 
And now I want to get back into the art part of working with this rose to create a really cool kind of graffiti rose out of this traditional skeleton. All right, we'll see you in the next one.